Good morning. This is Judy Gula with Artistic Artifacts, and it's National Quilting Day. Um, I have this theory about these special holidays that occur in America. We used to call them when I was growing up as greeting cards. You know, Mother's Day, Father's Day. Every day is Kids' Day, and every day should be National Quilting's Day, and every day grandparents, whatever. So, you know, we should celebrate these holidays. Hmm? I'm having trouble playing this video. I don't have you. You don't have me? Yeah, I don't know. If I've got four people. Sorry. Six people. Okay. Sorry, we just had a, a, a tech check. Which you know, <laughs> I'm technically challenged, so we, <laughs> you know, they kind of, I have this uh, aura that you know, take those two electronics and go, sit, sit. but anyway, so some days it works. All right, National Quilting Day, we're back on track. So we wanted to celebrate National Quilting Day with showing you kind of a little bit about our quilting. So. Our quilting is a, an area that I think has come to life and when I traveled I had art quilts in our booth and it, it always was a question is how do I get there what is it why do you call it an art quilt where, what do I where do you get your inspiration so what we thought we would do today is that we have Kathy Edwards a, a recent member to our team here at Artistic Artifacts and she is an art quilter among we, you know, we just don't limit ourselves to art quilting, among <laughs> other things. And then we have Chris Vin, who um, you saw her. She does our, she did a Creative Grids YouTube and is our social media uh, maven. And um, so we're going to start and cover a little bit about our quilt and give you some, you know, kind of a quick tutorial and a little bit of a nice trunk show for it to start your day off with. So we're going to start with Kathy, and what's the question you get asked all the time, Kathy? <laughs> Where do I start? How do you get your inspiration for an art quilt? Um, and I, my simple answer would be, inspiration's all around you. Go for a walk in your neighborhood and breathe the air, look at the trees, look at the mother nature, look at the sky. I mean, I even walked through my neighborhood after a rainstorm and there were big puddles and I saw the reflection of the trees in the puddles and snapped photographs of those that I could use as inspiration when I came back and got in the studio. You can also use um, books uh, of inspiration. I was doing uh, sea scenes at one point and my sister referred me to a book I'd like to share, actually mm -hmm. two books. And they are art forms, and because I wanted to you do a sea scene, um, I found these books absolutely wonderful inspiration for the creatures I created in the piece. Is this it? Your piece? This is that you worked on. Yes. yes. And I call this piece, um, hmm, yeah, swim at your own risk. And I took a number of the elements from the book and incorporated them into. Um, you gotta see the back. The made up sea creatures. Um, but from the book, they were in their microscopic forms, and I just expanded on them. I used a lot of the um, training that I got in various workshops here at Artistic Artifacts. And at the time, we had online, I took online training. So I used beads, I used Tyvek beads that I made after they were painted. Yep, I see those um, in your seat, in your... I even managed to put a zipper piece in here from a jellyfish. Um, it's wonderful to be able to use the skills you learn in these classes that teach you techniques and not necessarily a finished product. So moving on from that, as I say, nature takes various forms, obviously, and um, I This was the first one, or this was the first one? This was the first one. Okay. So, so I like to rummage through estate sales, as Judy <laughs> does, too. And I came across this little pamphlet. Um, actually, I guess it was a book, and I saw, oh my god, these are free designs to copy. And I flipped through it, and look at the price of that, two bucks. But it had wonderful flowers that 
I thought I could recreate, and boy, I stumbled across this one. And I just and said, look. there's my thistles. So you took it from paper, and you converted it to fabric. Correct. And a little paint. And some paint. And lots of thread paint. Yes. And I was also learning about how to create a series from, uh, I believe it was Elizabeth Barton. And so, as you do your art quilts, you can ask yourself, what if? What if I took one of those painted backgrounds and put the same type of thistle on it? And so, I believe this background was from a shaving cream <laughs> um, and ink exercise that I did. Um, so, and I have, you can just go, what if? Yeah. And that's your inspiration to move to another right. art quilt. I love how you mounted these. Let's, let's yeah, you, you, go ahead. you have the frames, so they become kind of like fine art. So you have your quilt, which is your three layers, and then you have your frame. Now, how did you attach these, Kathy? I believe it was glue. Yeah, I used soft gel to attach mine. Okay, and yeah. this was a number years ago but the other thing is that I think separates art quilts from um, more classical quilts is the finish you can, I can just take a fancy stitch on my sewing machine and finish this oh, I don't have to spend all the time folding fine. and cutting and everything else that goes on it I just get to find some fancy thread to put on the edge we have fancy thread I know <laughs> <laughs> um, one other area that would provided me with some inspiration. I belong to Fairfax um, Quilters Unlimited, and we had a challenge where we ripped a piece of paper out of the fall issue of, what was it maybe Glamour Magazine, but one of those big fall fashion magazines, and our challenge was to create a quilt using the colors in those pictures. And many people thumb through trying to find the perfect picture that they can make their quilt as I just ripped a page yeah, out. Right. And um, it happened to be an ad for lipstick. And so there were some wonderful colors in the right. page that tell I had. Us, sorry, tell us, tell I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So <laughs> I took a photograph of the camellia bush that's outside my front door. And I incorporated the colors of the page into my camellias. And as I mentioned earlier, that question of what if, what if I took that same picture and interpreted it in black and white. And this would then be, became my second in my series of two <laughs> of my camellias. Wonderful. Oh, I have some nice camellias in my, uh, my yard. Sorry, I keep moving it. And I did learn a lesson long ago to make a label for my quilt. And so on my label, I made a picture of the magazine page and my quilt. So you can incorporate so many different techniques in art quilts that I never would have thought of as a classical quilt. And it's all good. If you yeah, like it's it, fun. it's perfect. It was fun. It's the, that's, we should be quilting for ourselves and to bring joy to ourselves. So I think these are great examples, Kathy. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for You're sharing. Welcome. All right, and we all want those books, you know, so of you better keep them under lock and key. <laughs> okay. yes. And we all want them. Here you bees go. Okay, now we're ready for Chris. Chris had, comes to us from a worldwide traveler and incorporates, incorporates pictures into your artwork from your travels. And your pieces are absolutely amazing. And they have been juried into several shows. Yes. So a lot of my inspiration, much like Kathy talked about her inspiration, is nature, color, and because I've been fortunate enough to travel a lot in Southeast Asia, a lot of my quilts have colors that I have seen and imagined and whatever when I, when I have traveled. So this was the first piece I did from my travels, and this is um, Impressions of Enley Lake. And this Enley Lake um, is in Burma slash Myanmar. Um, and this was actually traveled as part of the Sacred Threads exhibit. So it was in Sacred Threads several years ago and then traveled. Um, and it incorporates, 
transfer artist paper. So this is a piece of burlap. And this is a uh, young woman. Uh, it's a picture of a young woman on the, on the boat um, traveling. This is on, I think this is silk organza. So the people actually on the lake, they actually live on houses on, the, on stilts. Uh, here's their house again. And this is where we stayed, the hotel. And we were watching the sunset in, in the gardens. Um, but again, I do bits and pieces as Judy likes to call them. Uh, these were, I think, pieces I picked up here at the shop sometime. Uh, this is actually uh, the river, the, the lake that runs through it. It's actually a silk scarf I got in Vietnam and I put Misty Fuse on the back, fused it down and took advantage of the colors. And all my little trinkets on there are ones that the kids gave us um, as we visited the villages. So it, it has lots of special meaning to me, but um, was just a joy to make. And obviously I've got lots of hand stitching. Um, I love using both the Wonderfill and the Tentaculum in my pieces. And it's, to me, it's all about the color. Um, so I might, you know, some people roll their Tentaculum up nicely on a spool. <laughs> and mine's a big tangle because I want this color in this piece or I want this color in here. So I'm taking the thread and finding just the right colors to, to use on that. So then the next quilt I worked on, you'll see a little bit of the same colorways. Um, this is my National Parks quilt from the, um, inspired by the National Parks uh, collection that Donna DeSoto curated um, several years ago. And everything in the quilt, almost everything, there's a couple pieces, this isn't from here, but everything else in the quilt pra practically is stuff I picked up here in the shop. Um, these pieces are some silk. Um, I think this was back and, you know, Judy was doing some dyeing, but I've, I've done block printing on them. So um, lots of block printing and then I embellished with stitches. I love your background though. I mean, that's just... Well, this was a piece of fabric you brought back from Bali yep. when you first went to Indonesia. Um, some of my batiks. Um, but what this one, and just like Kathy said, this was inspired by photographs. Um, so my label has the photographs that inspired me. Um, they were pictures that my niece took in California of the Pinnacles National Park. And so those have been added to my quilt. And you did the, your labels on um, wheat. So one of the things that's a big deal about labels, because and I'm not so good about it, is that um, I take cotton lawn and I set it up in a Word doc. And so I do a couple of quilts at a time, so I get the picture to put in. It's, it e reads easily. And then, so I print my labels as well. And it's a really great idea. And that's what we use on that is the cotton lawn. Class I took with Cass Holt here um, about a year and a half ago. She was here in September 2019. As you see, and hers was a mixed media collage class. Um, again, you see my tree. It was leftover fabric from from this quilt. Um, I've got this was a hand hand dyed tea towel from that I picked up off the back table. Here's another piece of this green silk. And then for this one, I've actually added um, papers, which was part of the class with cats, um, was using papers. Um, and if you see, um, I've actually stitched into the papers. These are lots of French knots. That's my favorite little stitch. I mounted it. Um, it's stitched onto this upholstery uh, sample fabric that I actually um, as somebody dropped this off, a whole bag full of them. It was handed to me and said, I know you'll do something with this. Um, and then mounted um, on a piece of wool. And again, I've put it on a frame. I've covered the frame up and um, the label for this, this is actually a piece that's for sale. So it has my business um, label. <laughs> and then since they're all in the same colorway, I do dream in color. 
I'm the person who keeps putting all those color pictures on social media, so I just wanted to show you just a little bit of the other stuff that I do, because working in a fabric shop, we see lots of fabric come in the store. And so I can't make big quilts, I can't make samples of every, everything that comes in the store. So I have taken various um, pieces of fabric. This is from Denise Burkett's uh, fr uh, Fancy Free collection. And I have hand stitched the middle portion, mounted it on um, another quilt. So it's actually three quilts mounted it on that one, and then I took another piece of the fabric to frame it and did some mach machine stitching on it. And I love that, your layers. I see, I, I don't know that I would have thought about matching, the, matching it up. So you've continued the fabric pattern on the back layer to work with the front layer. I, I don't know if I'd been well, that, like, organized. What I realized when I was trying to figure out where to place this is that this got lost if you had it in a larger piece of fabric okay. with all that goes on on that. I mean, this is just an exquisite piece yes, of fabric. It is. Um, and I have more of it and I'll, I'll probably stitch some more. Another color inspiration. This one was actually a friend, Suzanne Langsdorf made a tunic for me, a schoolhouse tunic with fabric from the shop. This is a leftover remnant, and this is a Kaminasi. It's a, a woven batik that we, we have in the shop. This was a napkin from a social enterprise in Africa. And this was a piece of um, ice dyed by Holly um, Cole. And we're quilters. We like to cut fabric up and then sew it back together. So rather than putting her a whole piece there, I pieced it back together and it's all stitched with tentaculum to show off the colors. And my last one is, this is another piece of, um, I think this was Denise Burkett's first, yes, first one. one. Um, this is a hand dyed wool that again, I cut up, I wove it um, to show off the colors. It's sti stitched with tentaculum. This piece is a, uh, I think palette with um, wonderful uh, spaghetti um, stitching. Yeah, the size 12. And then I used a piece of the fabric, but it was the fabric that inspired the inside color. So all of mine are the colors and textures um, and you know how I use the products in the store. Now, Kathy and Chris, would you say that you came to quilting more as piecers and large, creating large quilts that maybe were more on the bed, or did you come directly into art quilting? Well, I came from piecing and found that my piecing wasn't so great and found art quilting more forgiving. So I would spend a lot of time on a larger quilt and trying to smush it under my machine, trying to quilt it when I was done. So yeah, I came from more of the traditional piecing mm -hmm. and found this shop and sh oh, changed my life. <laughs> Actually, I started with hand piecing and hand quilting and then I went to machine piecing and quilting, made quilts. Um, but most of mine, I mean, I've done a, a few wall, I mean, I've done a few bed quilts, but most of mine have been wall hanging size. Again, manageable. Um, but the reason I stopped hand quilting back in, I think I found the thing that was 1987, was my stitches, I didn't think my stitches were perfect. And now, I don't care. <laughs> it's all about the color. So it really has, you know, I have gone um, to realize that our quilt frees that up. Mm -hmm. You know, and while I love making a shop sample and it's all about using a ruler and a pattern, this is what gives me the most joy, joy is the textures and the colors and, and the memories that go with the piece. Right. Okay, now it's okay, your turn. Now it's my turn. <laughs> um, okay. I, I asked that question, again, because we did travel um, and do shows and meet people when we started the business. So what if we just, when we were waiting to go live, we were talking about time periods and, and kind of moments when, um, you know, that moved our lives into a different direction. 
So I um, have always been involved in vintage textiles and collecting them, not you know, and working with them. And I was always a dyer and a spinner and a weaver in my first life. So I also was part of the um, Torpedo Factory, which is an art center here in Old Town Alexandria. So I was always trying to find something that was fiber related but saleable. And I guess the last thing before I went to quilt-like pieces was I, I had a whole line of fiber jewelry that I created. And I would paint it and I would start with white muslin and all that other stuff. And my friend said to me, she goes, you know, there's fabric that's already painted out there. And I'm like, really? Oh, well, I don't know anything about that. So she took me to a local quilt store and I bought some batiks and some printed fabrics and I promptly took them home and painted them again. She's like, what are you doing? I said, well, I don't know, it needed more pattern. And so I make these little beads with fabric that was always painted and I, I said, necklaces, bracelets, earrings, the whole, I had a whole line. Um, and so I was like, okay, well now I know about quilt stores. And, and this was pre-2005. So 2005, I took a class with a mixed media artist named Laura Cater Woods. And that was really what shifted me to the quilting area. So in her class, I created this quilt. So quilting is that it has three layers, but I have paper, I have beads. You can see I have a very non-traditional um, hanging piece and it's maps and it's a tree and so this is where I entered quilting no no straight lines no rules no rulers I don't even know if I had a rotary cutter at that point in time so I this is where I started so I came to this in this quilting from kind of more a creative area of working with textiles in different ways. So another piece, and I did say I like vintage, right? You know that. So um, this piece was done based on these old overall buttons and a vintage piece. I just thought it was kind of cool that it had circles and oh, I found fabric that had circles and so um, I did this piece. Now, as you can see, I have pieces sticking out here, so it's kind of hard to bind that. And I didn't know what the right way or accepted way to do it was. So I went to a friend and I said, what do I do? She says, oh, fuse them. I'm like, oh, okay. So I did, I fused it and I kept, so I have a lot of raw edges. I'm just trying to pull a string and that's not a good idea when you have buttons. And I um, just made it three dimensional. So this was, is, you can see this piece if I stop moving it, is a header in our on our website. And so this has always been, red is, is quite significant in our family for a lot of different reasons. And this is what this piece became was our logo. So those are two very, very early pieces. Then I, not sure when I did this, but I collect orphan photos. So this is an orphan photo. I think that it's probably at the beach when they were doing portraitures and things. And I just, I printed it on cotton lawn directly. And it's got pieces of hand dyed vintage trims and, and millinery, I love millinery. Uh, leaves and flowers and things and trying to put it in a lot of pieces that I have. And then I was like, okay, well, you know, I need something more. And there was this old ratty suitcase that I probably had picked up off the side of the road and I cut this off of it and look at what it gave me it gave me a wire to, to, to tie you know a spectacle keys dominoes onto it and I think I sewed this quilt piece onto this piece so you can see it's stiff and it, it's, um, here's my label that I do. I print those out. I have a standard one that I do. And so this is my, one of my mixed media pieces. And so far, I, I do sew my buttons on. I don't glue them. I will sew whatever I have down. Like these are all sewn down as well. So, um, 
that piece was done. Then when we had our store, um, Cindy Souter and I, I was traveling and doing shows all across the country and Cindy got what I received access to a couple of, one was suiting, so we did a suits, power suits challenge. This one was lace and we did a linen and lace challenge. So we um, had a lot of fun with those, lots of participation across the country. And this piece was mine that I did. So it's got a full corset. It's got a picture off the wall. It's got a bracelet off the arm. I call this one the dressing room. And this is, uh, this is what I love. This is what, as Chris says, her part is, but this is what like just gives me chills and I absolutely love doing this type of work. This is a different piece. Again, with a picture, this is an old travel postcard that I found in an estate sale. It is a quilt because it does have three layers and I mounted it on a um, canvas, if you can see. And I collaged and painted the canvas first. So you can see that there are some mixed media parts there and added and trimmed and things. So I, I just, I love the little picture. In 2012, um, my husband and I purchased Petit Timbal from a lovely couple that lived in Connecticut and had traveled the circuit. I say the show circuit because you all become, you know everybody, your friends. It's um, And she had these fabulous hand-drawn batik panels. So she would travel with us for like a year afterwards and she's like, well, you know, you're still using my samples. I want to see what you're going to do. Where's your personality in this business? And she took this panel and she handed it to me and she says, I want you to do a piece that's really you. I was like, okay, I can do that. So as you can see, I have hand dyed piece. I have my, my um, pillowcase on the back, hand dyed piece, which I hand stitched, another flange here, but then there, now we have beads and trinkets. So you can see these here. And I have drawers and drawers of this stuff. So you do have to collect it because I, I, don't, know, I don't know how to work on a per project basis. So what I would do is I would take this panel and I would start going through my studio and throw things that I think would work into a tray. And I might have several trays working at a time. I mean, I think I have five projects in my head at the moment that I've started collecting things for. So I, you do, I have a drawer of beads, I have a drawer of trinkets. Um, yeah, I have a drawer of a lot of stuff. <laughs> so this was my piece that was making Batik Timbal my business. And um, so, and then we, it led to the book that we brought out about our Batik panels. So the business really started full time in 2012 and we were still touring, we were still going to shows, and at that time the store started to um, emerge and morph and things. And, and now we're not on the road too much, we're more on our store and more online. Um, so that's how the business changed. And with that becomes working with things that come into the store to sell. So sometimes that's not everybody's passion, but we do, feel passionate about inspiring you to work with the materials that we have. That's our absolute number one job, is to inspire you. Um, so, and I do, as Kathy mentioned, I do go to estate sales. Not everything is brand new in our store. We have vintage, we have reclaimed, we have all kinds of things. So, in the last couple of years, a friend of mine passed away who had an amazing collection of Japanese fabrics. So she also was very close to my taste, very international in her fabrics, very creative in how she put things together. And she left me, not me specifically, but I claimed them. She, I claimed them right away. Um, she left a big box of one inch strips. Now mind you, we're going from this to one inch strip log cabins. So I'm learning backwards. I was never a piecer. I was, ne I was an assembler. 
So now I'm piecing one inch log cabins. Who would have thought you would have seen that? So a couple of these blocks, many of these blocks were Virginia's and then I made my own blocks and I did purposely pull the red in to make a little bit of a pop. I free motioned all my log cabins. I actually, I have a Q20, which I did all the free motion on, but Q20 has a basting stitch. So I took a size 12 thread and a basting stitch and I ran that pop of red through there that's stitched. So this is called unfinished because my friend Virginia passed away because before she could finish it, but her legacy continued through me. Um, and I, I just think that that's, that's a really big thing as we see people around us and, and what can we take and move forward and uh, go ahead and, and finish for someone. It's a creative partnership. So I think that that's really great. Another piece that's called unfinished, let me pull that out. I seem to be working in a lot of blues right now. Um, this is a piece that is here, and this is unfinished also. So I went through and I planned a block. Again, I'm learning new skills here, that I wanted to echo this piece here. So this piece here was echoed here in this block. And of course I have to have a pop, I have to have red, and so this piece is, is not finished yet. I'm not quite sure where it's going, but it is there. And this piece, I, I what, do I fold it, do I cut it, do I whatever? And I said, no, it's unfinished. I need to leave that as part of the piece. So I'm gonna just sew it across the top once I get my layers done, and so that piece will hang free. And this is with South African shui shui fabric. So I'm, I'm very much, cultural fabrics are very um, interesting to me now. Um, all right. So ever being the salesperson that I am, there's a couple of things that we have if you're interested in these um, types of we have ecot woven Japanese. We have printed Japanese that are in packs. We have woven a pack of just a general woven pack that is there. And this one will be up on the website soon, which leads me to the next one. So we have five by five squares up and we have 10 by 10 squares. So with this one pack of five by five squares, I have worked on multiple quilts. The first one I worked with is here. So it, this is a piece of Sino type, as I'm saying that right? Okay, that I purchased from Susan Gans. And um, I did some hand stitching in here. And then I also took these Indian fabrics and accented them. I just thought the theme and the feel and the color would be perfect with it. There's also more Sino type that I got from Suzanne that I tried to echo with hand stitching. And again, I was making blocks up and sewing pieces and cutting that fabric apart and sewing it back together. <laughs> uh, so that was one of the first pieces that I worked with on these Indian scraps. The Indian fabric is lighter weight than what we would consider quilting fabrics in the US, but worked fine, no problem. Then this piece really is about my trip to India. Um, I actually was very lucky. I had this piece from before. It's mirrored in pieces, so it came. I have a little bit of a real paisley scarf and a trim, and I wanted to figure out how to focus on those pieces. And so I, I do have these blocks that are similar to the other one, but the other thing about how I do my blocks is if I can't get it to fit, I just add more fabric. So like if I needed this to be this way, to be, you know, get into these squares. So, okay, here's a perfect example. So here's a square, maybe, but it, I wasn't lined up right. Well, okay, I just added a piece of fabric. So that's where that art quilting free form comes into, but, but I am kind of trying to make things be a little square. And as you can see, it's not really square. <laughs> But I don't care. I love it. It's beautiful. It's it's what it, it's the the cultural fabrics 
that are inspiring me currently at the moment as I travel. So we're, we're going back to India next year, 2022. We're going to Italy next year. So it's all about those cultural fabrics in those countries. So um, are there any questions? I know we've all talked pretty straight through. Lots of compliments. No, no, no real questions. Okay. It's right. a wonderful way to celebrate quilting day. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, we're, we're very glad that you could join us. We had a lot of fun talking about our work and, and what inspired us. And, and hopefully, as I said, our number one job at Artistic Artifact is to inspire you. Um, all right, Chris, you want to make the announcement? We do have an announcement. Da, 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 da. I don't do that very well. <laughs> so we actually have had a giveaway, and we don't have the tax rights with us. But oh. <laughs> We had a giveaway on Instagram and Facebook over the last couple days, and they were actually hand-dyed uh, fat quarter bundles in a multiple of colors, um, and so... They're hand-dyed in India. Hand-dyed hand in India, um, and we had so many comments that I did a random um, number generator on Instagram and Facebook this morning and the Instagram winner is Katherine Schlagen Lawson. I'm sorry if I massacred your name. She's rather be in San Francisco on Instagram and her choice is yellow. And on Facebook it's Arlene Salbert who said she would be happy with any color. So I'll follow up um, when I get home, um, contacting them directly, and we'll get their shipping information and, and get those off to them soon. But congratulations. The comments were phenomenal. Um, yeah, they were really great. As, and one of the things that we would encourage you, if you're buying them, to post how you're using them. Yeah. And the other thing we would like to encourage you today is we do have a Facebook group called Artistic Artifacts Creative Minds. And we have a, uh, every Saturday, we have a share on Saturday. And today we're encouraging people to post their quilts as part of National Quilting Day. So show us your quilts. They don't have to be our quilts. We'd like to see traditional quilts. We like to see our quilts. So uh, hopefully we'll see lots of quilts later. And I know there's lots of other uh, National Quilting Day activities going on. You can check the uh, Quilt Alliance Facebook page or website. And I think starting a little bit later today, the International Quilt Museum is doing, they will be live on Facebook most of the afternoon with activities and tours and um, interviews. So take advantage of the day, celebrate our medium um, and, our, and our love, whether you are a quilter an art quilter or just somebody who loves looking at quilts. Okay. There's uh, lots to do to celebrate um, our, our medium. So yeah. thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Thank you. We will see you next Saturday at 930 at Artistic Artifacts in Alexandria. Thank you.